Greetings, sirs and madams. I'm Seravik Zero, and we're playing Bayonetta on the Wii U. So this is a Let's Play that I've always wanted to do for this channel. Uh, the Bayonetta game on, or the original Bayonetta game on the PS3 was one of my absolute favorite games I've ever played. And so I actually lost uh, my save data like on the PS3 version, so now that this franchise has moved over to Nintendo being placed on the Wii U, I figure this was a good chance to just go ahead and pick up the game again. And yeah, the game is made by Platinum Game Studio. Uh, in my opinion, basically the best game studio out there. They just consistently make um, high quality games with fantastic gameplay and presentation. Just overall um, very fun, like just very over the top games. Of course, the director is Hideki Kamiya. He's the original creator of the Devil May Cry series, I believe. So uh, Bayonetta and Devil May Cry, they're, um, there's a phrase for them. Uh, they're spectacle fighters. So basically, they're action games that um, pretty much emphasize uh, being able to do like like really crazy, <laughs> like over the top combos like on the enemies. And while the difficulty of the games can be really high, like as you improve, like uh, at the gameplay mechanics, you can just be absolutely insane with what you can do. And so uh, the Bayonetta games, they're just uh, they're just really silly and really wacky, like really over the top, uh, fantastic action, and they're just overall really really fun, like really fun combat mechanics, really interesting like uh, like mechanics like which time and things like that. And so it's just a really fun series, so hopefully you can enjoy that with me. Well, yeah, transitioning over this game is going to be a little difficult for my narration because, um, yeah, the yeah the videos are going to be quite long. Like, uh, this one's going to be like half an hour or something. So a lot of that's going to be cutscenes uh, because, you know, it's got to establish the story and the settings and things like that. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'll probably just have to narrate over them because, I don't know, if you want to watch a silent playthrough of the game, you can just uh, do that. Uh, plenty of other channels are doing that. And, of course, I'll try to narrate the gameplay, too. So um, hopefully that all makes sense. It's got um, quite a bit of depth to its gameplay mechanics, so hopefully that will be enjoyable for you. And the game actually has a huge amount of replay value. It has... Um, God, how many difficulty settings does it have? It has at least it has at least five, and then there's all kinds of different like weapons and unlockables and skills you can get, uh, different characters too. So back on the PS3 days, it was actually the only game in my entire life that I, I've ever 100 percented. I, I got like every single trophy unlocked, absolutely unlocked everything. Um. I think it might have, yeah, it's, in my opinion, it's probably the best game of the PS3's generation, so a chance to play it again is really cool. Um, I think I did absolutely everything in that game except for, I didn't play the game with the other unlockable characters, I just used Bayonetta the whole time. And also, God, what? Yeah, I didn't do a pure perfect platinum playthrough, that means... Uh, you go through the entire game without ever getting hit, <laughs> and you basically perfect score everything and do a speed run at the same time. I I honestly don't understand the guys that do that. <laughs> like, there's having that just doesn't sound fun to me. Like to just like be super OCD about a game that's supposed to be like super fluid and flexible. So whatever. Yeah, and it was just really interesting to play a game where you're fighting against uh, angels, essentially. And we'll talk more about the angels a bit later, so they're actually pretty, pretty humorous. <laughs> so yeah, the game is just totally over the top and wacky. God, she's just flinging these things around. Yeah, so Bayonetta, she's she's actually a really interesting character. So I I get a feeling that she's uh, really poorly represented by the community and just like all the different like weird discussions that happen about her. But she's I don't know, like 
obviously like her character design is supposed to be very um, provocative, but honestly, in the game there's like, there's not really any nudity or there's no sex. It's just, um, I don't know, she just likes showing off and that's just how she has fun, you know? So it's actually very, um, I don't know, it's just like fun and liberating, you know, like, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just, it feels, it's like an environment where you can just let your hair down and things are fun and, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, Rodine is, um, he's a, he's like a demonic character and he actually runs uh, the shop in this game. So if you're going to buy weapons and upgrades and stuff, like, yeah, you go hang out with him. <laughs> yeah, the currency in this game is uh, Angel Halos and it actually looks like you're collecting Sonic rings. I think that's like, it's like a deliberate, uh, totally deliberate thing. I think it's because um, Platinum Games actually evolved out of a bunch of other studios. I think this team is the one that they they originally did the Beautiful Joe and the Okami games. So you'll see a lot of references to things like that. So things like uh, which time it looks a lot like the, the time controls in Beautiful Joe. And then later on when we get a few different upgrades, you'll see lots of references to Okami as well. And that, uh, if you guys haven't played Okami, play that, because that, that is just a really, like, fantastic, beautiful game. Just really interesting, like, aesthetics. Yeah, so, the, the cutscenes in Bayonetta, they are really cool. Um, they have, basically, like, really fantastic choreography, like, really, and just <laughs> really fun and really silly. And just... The funny thing about the angels, like, in this game, is that they're basically giant chickens. <laughs> it's just the, all, like, the mythology and all the hoopla about angels, like, just... And in this game, they're just, like, giant birds getting, like, smacked around and stuff. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Yeah, so the cool thing about Bayonetta is... Okay, I, I really don't understand, like how like uh how she's just so fantastic at fighting i guess it's it's just something that doesn't really need an explanation but but holy crap she is like really skilled and really powerful because like while she's a witch she's really just a human being you know she's not like supernatural in that sense you know like if like the reason she's so good at dodging attacks is basically if she gets hurt like she really gets hurt so, and I think like all of her like super strength and speed and stuff, it's really just enhancement from, you know, her magical powers, like as a witch. <laughs> They're just... Oh, man. Oh god, they're just giant chickens. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the gameplay is just really fun and smooth and very responsive. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Alright, here we actually get into the gameplay. Yeah, so this is my very first load of the game, so it's going to go through some tutorials. And I am playing this on the Classic Controller Pro. Um, you, alternatively, you can play on like the, the touchpad, but... I do not want to play a game this complicated on a, on a touchpad, so... <laughs> yeah, so the combos in this game essentially uh, break down into uh, punch and kick, and you do different uh, combinations and timings of that. And, like, uh, the, one of the core things to the game mechanics in this is the dodge mechanic, and it's actually what makes Bayonetta such a fluid and responsive game is that you can basically use the dodge to cancel out of anything in this game. And if you time the dodges properly, you can activate which time, which uh, basically it slows down time for the enemies and you get increased attack and combo bonus. So 
Yeah, and what you notice there is that the enemies are actually very difficult to stagger. Um, you almost, you almost really shouldn't try to interrupt their attacks. So that uh, basically forces you to rely on the dodge mechanic instead. Yeah, so we we started off here with Bayonetta's uh, starting weapons, which are just regular uh, human manufactured handguns. And you also have a shoot button, which is um, crap. I forgot which one it is on on the Nintendo controller, but it'd be the square on the PS3 version. Yeah, so the reason I'm shooting right here is that um, as long as you're actually maintaining attack on one of the enemies, it's going to keep your combo meter up and you can just... Whoa, <laughs> you managed to catch me. Yeah, so as long as you're hitting somebody, your combo meter is going to keep filling. So that's why um, I'm going to try to minimize the time in between when the enemies spawn. And if you connect with your handgun, that's going to keep um, the meter up. Alright, so, <clears throat> yeah, every time there's a new enemy, it's gonna introduce them, so... God, what the hell are these things? Yeah, I don't know, they're just like... <laughs> like little baby heads on wings or something. Yeah, so this was what I was trying to do the whole time, and I guess... Uh, not all the mechanics have been unlocked for me yet, so... Every time you hold a punch or the kick button, like, uh, like when you're... You can just, like, during your melee attack, if you hold down the button, uh, Bayonetta is going to actually fire uh, the gun that she has equipped. And of course, this is going to be a little different for the other types of weapons. Like, she can equip uh, different types of guns, like handguns and shotguns and laser guns and, <laughs> and bazookas and shit like that. But she also has like other things like uh, like whips and swords and claw weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's one thing that also adds a lot to the... Um, the replay value of this game. Um, you can just do different runs with different weapons and combinations of stuff. It's just really interesting to try out all the different stuffs and effects. Yeah, and I'm sorry if it, like, um, some of you might be more familiar with the game, and I'm sorry if I'm being really clumsy, because <laughs> uh, I actually haven't played the first Bayonetta game in a very long time, so. Yeah, just forgive me for that. And also, um, I'm tr I think I'm trying to use a lot of attacks just that haven't been unlocked yet. I just it's just hard to tell when you first loaded the game, you know. Like for instance, um, when you first start the game, you can't uh, fire your weapons by holding the melee attacks until it shows you that. Um, yeah, I and at this point in this game, you don't have the air dodge yet, so I'm actually trying to dodge a lot in the air, but it's just not going off because. You have to buy it, so. Yeah, and while I, I, I love so much about this game, but one thing I, I didn't really like was how it did its cutscenes. Like some of them were fully animated, but others it kind of uses this um, kind of film reel, like uh, like screenshot type uh, filmography to it. And I didn't really enjoy that too much. Like it was sure it was like really creative for the time. But it just wasn't very um, eye-catching or interesting to watch. I really think they should have just gone through and did uh, fully animated like uh, cutscenes. Yeah, and that angel with uh, the two like sword whip things right there—it's one of the stronger enemies. Yeah, it actually—it's uh, it actually has its HP bar displayed in the corner. But yeah, he's not too tough. Yeah, it looks like I t took a bit of damage. Yeah, after every fight you get a grade, and then like all of your different grades get added up at the end of the mission, and you basically get a score off of that. <laughs> yeah, she's a pretty fun character. Um, like a yeah, I like her accident. Like she's a definitely very. Um, I don't describe this. I like the the character quite a lot. Like uh, people treat her like she's just like uh, some sort of object, and like like ooh, we're all like a bunch of creeps like for playing the game and stuff. But like as you go through the story, it's 
I don't know, it's just not really like that at all. Like, I find that I actually... Like, I totally understand this character, and she actually has quite a, like, a tragic backstory. And, like, the whole theme of the game is about, basically, like, going back and figuring out her past, and basically... Oh man, like, um, you, you saw the last video, right? About, like, the witch hunts? <laughs> um, yeah, so her character, basically, like, she was born of a forbidden union and like all throughout her childhood she was forbidden from learning magic so she basically grew up like locked in a cage like for her entire life and the only reason she's out here right now is uh you know when she broke she woke up and she is totally you know had no she had no memories so she just no, just came across her powers as a witch and right now she's living as a mercenary to make a living you know so yeah that's just where the story starts and yeah one cool thing is that the loading screens act as a practice mode and you can actually um even though the game is done loading you can hit select to just and stay in the practice mode and try out all your different combos so if you start the game i, I highly recommend you take advantage of this to just make sure uh, you're on top of the combos, you know what everything does, and you know all of your different options. That car is fucked up. Oh man, yeah, Enzo is really grating. I, I'm not really sure like what the decision process was going into this. Uh, Thinking like he would be a good idea. Um, yeah, and I guess he is slightly like a comic, like comedic relief character. But I think they really should have made a character that was less grating on the ears and less bizarre. <laughs> and he's just he's just ugly and gross looking. <laughs> they really should have gone with something else. Oh yeah, didn't I just <laughs> explain this part? Yeah, so basically, um, the way a, a witch works basically is that, you know, like traditionally a witch gets her powers for, by forming a covenant with a demon or something like that. And Bayonetta, like, has done that. I think uh, the name of the demon she contracts with is Madama Butterfly. And I'll point that out later in the gameplay. But, um, yeah, she, like, <laughs> like Madame Butterfly, she, holy crap. But, yeah. So the way Bayonetta's magic works is it actually, um, it's the, the magic power is channeled through her hair. And you, you'll see like that type of theme like all throughout like uh, basically the art and the and the graphics and things like that. So her her suit is sort of like a magical armor, and you can do like different things like uh, I guess as you like uh, do the end of a combo like you'll you'll see like like a giant fist or a giant foot or something go out and just like smash the enemy. That's an attack called a wicked weave. Where basically, um, it's kind of like a, a half summon, basically. So those hands and feet actually don't belong to Bayonetta. That's Madama Butterfly. So it summons her just enough where she can interact with this realm and just basically punch people in the face. And yeah, in, in other parts of the game, you'll see like a complete full summon of a demon. And like the, the demon just like completely crosses over and just wreaks havoc it's 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 pretty amazing to watch but yeah so here's um basically the witch time mechanic being demonstrated in one of the cutscenes and here's like the the other um basically antagonist character of the game And 
yeah, the, the gun cutter in this game is just fantastic. Really fun to watch. And they use four handguns at the same time. Although, is it a handgun when you're shooting it with your foot? <laughs> Right, it's Virgil. Shit, I mean John. <laughs> I mean John. Holy crap, what caliber is that? So yeah, Bayonetta is still using like uh, the regular like human manufactured handguns. Yeah, so here's quite a difficult um, part of the game. I don't really like this section because, you know, like everything's all like super warped with witch time and stuff like that. So time's moving real slow. It's got this weird like filter going on it. And here I accidentally enter the menu. I, I was really trying to learn how to taunt on the controller. It's the L1 bumper. But yeah, I totally got the controls mixed up because I'm, I'm a little fresh like to this uh, version of the game. Yeah, so what you're doing here is that you see in the top left you have those circles. That's your magic meter, and um, once you get a full bar, it, like you'll see, like there's like a full meter is represented by like a, a like a totally one big filled up circle. And every time you have a filled up meter, you can in initiate a torture attack. Uh, basically, you hit kick and punch at the same time, and it's essentially a one shot kill on an enemy, um, or it's supposed to be. I think there are some torture attacks that if you don't if you don't pull off um, the button presses in time, it actually doesn't like kill them in one shot. <laughs> yeah, so I got hit. So you want to be careful about being hit in this game because, um, yeah, your meter will build as you attack or taunt, but if you take damage, your meter will decrease. Yeah, so the game actually punishes you. It's, it, yeah, it punishes you pretty bad for like taking damage. So. Yeah, so this section of the game, you're supposed to get off uh, three torture attacks, and I just wanted to get through it that as fast as possible. I should have maybe built up a higher combo, but yeah, I didn't want to take too much time with it. Yeah, so the neat thing, <laughs> yeah, so the neat thing about these two is they they basically use the same fighting style, um, and I believe the style was used by basically all the Umber witches. But yeah, they're they're obviously uh, the last two left. So the crap, she can jump like higher than the Hulk or something. <laughs> yeah, so that's the fun thing about Witch Time. That. That whole like scene and action sequence and and the the fight I did it happened in the span of like a second. Yeah, so in this scene, we're introduced to the Gates of Hell. Basically, it's uh, well, it's a bar. It's basically the hub um, for all the missions. Um, yeah, it's basically your shop menu. You don't really wander around the bar. You just uh, use the menu to purchase like upgrades, like extra health and extra magic. Uh, you can purchase healing items and stuff like that. But. Um, I don't know, I'm not really the type of person who uses items, like, in this type of game. Like, if I die, then I die. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, I am not the best player at this game. Um, I think you might be able to tell by watching me thunder about, but um, I'm fairly com competent at the game. I mean, I, I beat it on the highest difficulty uh, with a pretty good score, like, on um, like all of the missions. Yeah, and I unlocked all the weapons and all the different stuff, but I am by no means an expert. Um, yeah, if you want to see people that are really fantastic uh, with the game, I can probably link a few other channels. Um, personally, I recommend Sour. Uh, he is just... 
he is just an expert at these spectacle fighters. He really loves platinum games. And he has a playthrough going of the PC version of Bayonetta. That was actually released really recently. So if you want to try out this game and you don't have a Wii U, you can get it on the PC. And I think it's in, um, I think it's in 4K. So yeah, give that a try. Built from an alloy, the devil himself would kill to get his hands on. Ah, okay. So here we're going to unlock our very first weapon. And... Yeah, so these are Bayonetta's handguns. <laughs> and they are fucking huge. Yeah, so they are double-barreled handguns. Can they really be counted as handguns? Like, they're almost cannons, like, with that large of a caliber. Yeah, even though they're double-barreled, I don't believe that they... They don't... The, the two barrels don't fire simultaneously. I think they fire... Uh, basically in succession to give you a high firing rate. Calling me out. So if you have the handguns uh, attached, you basically get like the default uh, handgun like attack combos on punch and kick. But your shoot button, which is the square, like at least on the PS3, um, it always defaults like to this weapon. Yeah, so the game has a huge amount of replay value. I think I I must have played it for somewhere between two and four hundred hours uh, back on the PS3. And so um, I'm not sure how much of the replay I'm going to post to this channel, of course. Uh, I think there's at least two more difficulties above normal mode. Uh, there's very hard and then infinite climax, which actually changes the gameplay mechanics to be more difficult. Of course, there's also a lot of different weapons I can do the missions in, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but... Yeah, I definitely want to go through and at least unlock uh, a lot of the weapons for you guys to see. Uh, in particular, <clears throat> like one of my favorites is the Siphon. And it's actually a... It's a pair of nunchucks with uh, revolver pistols infused into them so that's just completely crazy and yeah so like after you finish a mission um yeah you play this mini like uh, this weird like mini game called angel attack basically uh, as you collect unlockables in like inside the mission like they're they're hidden like like little things like you get bullets for angel attack and it's basically a shooter where it's an arcade shooter where you just shoot things to get bonus points. And honestly, it is very difficult to control because you aim with the left stick. And, you know, like, um, I, I really dislike aiming with the left stick, especially for shooters like this. And <laughs> yeah, I apologize if I'm just like being super clumsy with this. But yeah, you can uh, shoot angels for combos and points and things like that. And you can use those points to uh, purchase items. Or I tend to just uh, exchange my points for like more money so I can do like other stuff. But anyway, I think we're basically out of time for this video. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it so far. And I, I'm definitely going to post a lot more of this. So hopefully um, like uh, we'll be like all together for that. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.